Well, that was fast. We just couldn't commit to five straight minutes of Tabitha being out there in the real world, getting us some answers. You know why? Because out was never really out and the outside of the from is still the damn from. The push out of the lighthouse didn't take Tabitha nowhere. Victor's dad, the little town, the city, the hospital, it's all the from. Now we're back by the damn tree. Let's get into episode three. back y'all while i give you guys a second to hit like buttons notifications ding dong bells and all that other good stuff do know that there will be a live hell discussing from in further detail every tuesday between 6 6 30 it'll be linked below just in case you care to get into that now let's get on boyd boyd this episode is officially starting to lose it in my opinion even though he feels like he is at his wit's end, we need to do something different instead of allowing the creatures from the from to go at us at will. We have already lost Miss Chen. I don't want to lose another single person. However, this plan to capture a creature to study it, according to Ellis, Father Kaltry, and Donna, this is not a smart idea and this is not like you. All of Boyd's plans are settling on a maybe. Maybe if I trap her creature in a home using a talisman, it will be at its most vulnerable state. And by daylight, I can torture it, study it for information maybe, or maybe it could just pop the hell out and kill you, Boyd. We really don't know. In my opinion, just like the whole predicament with the livestock and us going out to save it, the creatures are counting on Boyd to act as the last hope, the savior. It's all counting on me. I think he is playing into the creature's hands, the From's hands, and is doing exactly what they want him to do. Being panicked and frantic, acting irrational and not making sound smart decisions, not only for himself, but the people surrounding him. He trying to get Ellis in on this situation. When Donna came in and said, oh no, you have a lot to live for. You got a baby to think about. I was like, girl, that is not a baby. <laughs> a baby, are you sure it's a baby? But like a illusion, hallucination, Father Cautry said, don't dare diminish my sacrifice, Miss Chins, or anybody else's and chalk it up to you felt them. You are taking all of these things in internally. And I'm like, y'all built this monster. <laughs> y'all put all of this stuff on Boyd's back and shoulders and were looking to him because he gave the Fromville, gave that place structure. But now you are internalizing it so much that, oh, I failed. I, no, 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 no. Myself, Miss Chan, we were all out there on a ledge, lost our lives on our own accord, trying to sacrifice and help other people just like you were. And I think the sooner that boy realizes that it doesn't have to all be on him and it is, you know, a team joint effort, he'll get more of his sanity back, snap back into reality. And maybe that'll change the um, whole trajectory of the from for him. We don't really know. What I do know is, Things are gonna get a whole lot worse before they get better. And I feel like we are gonna see Boyd really flip the hell out. Leaving Boyd, who hopefully doesn't continue to make irrational decisions that get other people killed. Let's get into Jim. <laughs> we even opened the episode with Jim still on that damn phone, talking to a taunting Thomas. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, wasn't Thomas like an infantile baby? Like didn't Thomas roll off of a table and die, but Thomas is here speaking full sentences on the phone? How old was Thomas? But who we talking? We talking. How, how could you do that? How could you leave the kids? How could you leave them unattended at night? Like this is clearly the from taunting him and Jim's trying to explain, no, I didn't. Well, I didn't, uh, like, no, go get your kids. <laughs> When he runs out there and gets the kiss, this really leads us into Ethan's mind state as well as Julie, more so Ethan. Ethan, he's lost it. I'm, I'm, I'm done playing with y'all, okay? I know what this is now. People are dying. There is no hope. Are we really going home? Because if we're not, stop lying and telling me that we are. That childlike innocence that Ethan possessed from when they first arrived and they were trying to coast, everybody was kind of 
trying to save it whether it was miss chin tabitha donna let's preserve this he is still a child but now it's just like i understand what this is when he told boy like you don't know that <laughs> how do you know that like don't tell me that i think there's going to be something really significant about ethan losing his innocence and how that's going to affect the from I feel like this is all a part of the bigger plan and plots on what they are trying to do. We are trying to make people lose it, frantic, hinch Jim on the phone, talking to Thomas, not being able to even stomach eating, having questions about if mom's dead, who's gonna bury her, who's gonna take care of her, how he just can't take it. Julie growing more and more distant because of the state of their family, Tabitha, Jim, what is there left here? The From is slowly but surely breaking everybody down. Getting into Fatima, I am trying to have some compassion and give a damn. I do understand that this baby is a beacon of hope, especially for the likes of Donna and Ellis. There have been, you know, so many bad things happening in the front. Why can't we just have this one good thing and have Fatima and Ellis have this brand new bubbling bundle of joy? Because it's not and we're in the damn front and everything happens for a reason. Like Fatima, who was not supposed to be able to conceive a child now being pregnant with dark circles and pale skin completely she about, she about to become emaciated <laughs> she, she about to look tired as hell but i just feel like girl we have been through too much we have been through too much with the likes of you especially ellis with your relationship for it to be i just can't talk to anybody i just don't girl girl why not why not why we can't tell somebody our teeth are falling out the back of our mouths why can't we tell somebody that we are outside going to the rotten compost food pal gathering things to eat because it is giving us fulfillment that is not normal but you know who we do decide to talk to who just happens to see us at the compost rotten heap old lady tilly nobody trusts that old broad <laughs> nobody trusts that lady i don't care how many times they try to paint it what they try to put in our face, there has always has sipped to be some type of agenda when it comes to her. From the way that her demeanor was when she got there, I'm just an old sick lady living out my last days. That's why I really don't have a problem with these circumstances. It's just, it's something off about her. But <laughs> confiding in old lady Tilly, who decides to break out the tarot cards? Girl, let me give you a reading. Fatima is not feeling this at all. She's not taking it serious. She's offended when she says like, I don't, I don't know anything about you. Also, exactly, so why are we talking to her and not our husband? Like, ma'am. But as soon as we, you know, slide the deck of cards out on the table, we get the, the strongest, jumpiest omen that we could ever get. A big, thick ass black crow hits the window then goes through that window flies and knocking stuff i was like okay <laughs> and, and what was the question that we asked is my baby okay apparently hell no and neither are you this is about to escalate everything is just about to escalate and go astray i'm surprised that we didn't have her nibbling away at a, at a carcass somewhere, a dead animal, especially with the dead livestock running around there and the old cow heap in it. I thought, I thought we might get some fleshy stuff. It's coming. The only thing that she can do is keep escalating because she is not confiding in the people that she should be about her concerns. And there's nothing that us rolling on down to the local little fake mock hospital that, that, can, that can fix the situation. She, she gonna eat something and it's not gonna be Fruit. Now let's get on over into Victor, who is about to have his whole world rocked because like I said, to shake him up, we was gonna have to get Victor's dad in the front. We gonna, we gonna, we gonna save Tabitha and Victor's dad for last because I had said, <laughs> I didn't wanna see that. But Victor is losing it. Victor is losing it. Victor is, you know, counting them footsteps and pacing and the trees are moving. Things are doing more than they ever have before. I need solace. I need to, you know, go inward. 
let me go on, on down there to Sarah's. Ain't nobody gonna bother me at Sarah because she's a pariah and no, nobody's gonna be around here. Let me go stay with her. <laughs> of course, Sarah takes him in, probably just enjoying the company of having someone there. But he says, you know, he needs to build Ford Clubhouse and he needs a bedspread. And he's just gonna be living with Sarah from my understanding. Meanwhile, she's trying to still piece together that little ornament from her brother. Like I said, I think they are on a mission to redeem Sarah, to kill her off and have her, you know, come through in the clutch later but what the ending dynamics of this show could mean for victor is just boinkers victor is gonna lose it <laughs> i don't think this is gonna be like a oh my god papa daddy i think he's gonna lose his shit <laughs> i think he's gonna lose it and we're gonna have you know victor's dad in the front like son like uh yeah this isn't the little the little son who scurried out of here with the lunchbox 40 years ago this is a changed very um troubled individual who has experienced a lot because he was left alone for so long in a place like this and he's been here since he was a child this is not that anymore so the dynamic is going to be really really interesting but i don't, I don't think right off the bat it's going to be something great and uplifting for victor now let's get into the crew going to gather food your jade christy mullet christy which we need to call her because wow that was a choice <laughs> kenny old bald aggravating dude who is going to agitate anybody that is in a two feet radius of him that just won't die we could we could have took him we could he, he should have died first season but all right we are going back into this village as a team to gather as much food as we can. Now, mind you, as soon as they arrive there and we have the little skeletal structures, I was like, you know what? One of those, just like last episode, are the reason that this ground is still, you know, thriving, fertile, growing, that this land is protected from whatever the from is trying to do. Don't touch them don't move anything maybe they are acting as talisman of a sort for these grounds save that for later because we just had to touch it right <laughs> but christy is you know annoyingly attached to kenny at this point trying to be concerned for him are you okay K kenny's not trying to hear you know just let me grieve and have my space and move as i want to we are here to gather food let's just do this but rightfully so as kenny's friend even though she didn't want to give my boy none it's cool i ain't gonna never let that go because kenny was riding for me he he he, he won't it christy <laughs> She is trying to be there in a way that she knows that Miss Chin would want to make sure that he isn't alone and he is giving pushback. Once again, like with Boyd and Jim, everybody has been given advice to trouble them. Kenny suppressing his emotions, because I do feel like even though it was very emotional, the uh, moment that he shared with Boyd when he wanted to burn it all down, I really low key wanted to watch him burn it just to see what would happen. Let's just set it on fire. You know? what, what do we have to lose at this point? I feel like the, that it's, um, it's gonna be a whole lot bigger than that. We have lost two parents. Kenny is going to explode. But for right now, Christy, just leave me alone. Speaking of leave me alone, we have Jade. We have Jade this episode. Jade is losing it as usual because he is seeing these hallucinations, these this villager, this, this old time villager that no one else can see. Clearly an old inhabitant of this place, but it doesn't look like he is projecting the work of the From. This image is tacked to this tree via this dart or whatever through his eye not in a way that the from the creatures would attack somebody and we also see him doing this ritualistic looking activity drinking blood from a skull to me it did look like a smaller skull like it maybe had been you know from one of those kids and we do also have jade finding and touching those red rocks clearly something is taking place here before we could and he offered it to jade and he offered him some but leave below what that little man went don't don't be coming over here for easter eggs i've already told y'all about that but <laughs> We do have a concerned Christy trying to get to Jade. I was like, oh Lord, I ain't chasing nobody in the from. If it's gonna be dark in the next hour or so, and you know Jade has been there long enough to know what's happening in the front. I'm getting the hell out of here. I'm, do, it, do it and see what happens. 
going out there without a talisman and be in the dark and see what happens when you know how long it took us to walk here and how long it would take you to get all the way back home. Try it if you want to. I'm not chasing a soul. We don't have time. Christy, <laughs> all concerned, trying to chase down to save Jay from himself, gets her foot caught in a bear trap. And what do we need to get it out? As soon as Jade broke a piece of metal off of that structure, I was like, oh, why you go and do that for? Oh. <laughs> it was directly after I said, all right, don't touch those. Like they are here for a reason. They are probably keeping you guys safe and keeping something out. Uh, he, he breaks it off. We get her out of there, but what does this mean for them now staying overnight in this place with that structure being broken? What did we give license to now be unleashed and maybe walk this land that couldn't be walked before? We will see what happens to them in the next episode. I think this is just a sense of everybody not holding on and working together because it took for Christy to get her leg caught for Jay to have a revelation of, oh, it's about more than just me. I think the from wants you to be selfish, wants you to be hopeless, wants you to be every little negative inconsistency that you could possibly be to feed off of it. Then working together, having purpose as the people, you know, uh, day 30 without incident, like, no, 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 this, this is not at all what we want. We want to feed it to y'all and have y'all think that this could be that place this could have some sense of normalcy, but we don't actually want that. Nobody is thinking and tying in things to work as a, a whole. Even when we're getting into the black bus driver who arrived there and she has a connection with the grandma out in the world, which we're about to get into, and the um, the nursery rhyme that she knows that is um, relating to the things that are happening there. Everything is just working as a whole, but nobody's recognizing because we're moving as individuals. Even when we have Boyd roll up on Randall in the bus, having a hallucination of bugs attacking him. You know, we are starting to see things. Maybe we are about to bring them, um, Julie, Randall, uh, you know, the, the little druggy girlfriend. I can't remember her name for nothing, drug below. <laughs> then being taken in uh, by the from and taken over. I'm sure that this is an extension of that. But when Boyd hops on the bus, everything okay? Yeah, no, well, everything's fine. What do you want? Why aren't we telling each other things? Why aren't we working as a whole, as a team? But Boyd tells him, you know what? I want I want to use this bus. I want to get on this bus and watch the things in the from in hopes of, you know, having the ability to capture them better. Cool, let's get into Tabitha and Victor Daddy. We just, just had to, had to bring them back, right? <laughs> we had to bring them back to the front. I knew it, y'all couldn't even commit to it to like a fifth episode to try to give us some hope. We immediately took our asses back to the front. The whole episode, first, first when we opened and Tabitha ain't showered or, you know, changed clothes, pulled up her, her Nancy Drew panties out there in the world, searching looking for clues. I knew we wasn't going nowhere when we still woke up there and we we're still teetering on ideas and trying to make connections down in this basement. We have made it very clear that they are all tethered in some way, in some form, and there is no out of the front. Tabitha was never out. This is still all working as one big entity. <sighs> We have that, that that thread of the basement, the paintings, the connection to the children, Tabitha seeing some of the same things that Victor's mom saw, that that bracelet, that doom bracelet, <laughs> the themes of, you know, things being just directly tied in the basement in general. The, you know, the, the, the son and the kids. We have Julie, even though we had three kids, Thomas isn't there. We got there also with our, our uh, daughter and, and our son, just like Victor and his sister. There is too many similarities for there to be any separation. And I think it is connected in a way of things repeating itself over time. I'm sure that there has been another Tabitha who had two kids and a husband and bottom line, we get out here and make our way to this bottle tree. This is where Tabitha finally feels like she has a strong inkling into how she can connect something back to the front and maybe even find a way out. Your wife put a lot of stock in these trees and she replicated it because she loved it so much, but the real original is in the park. Maybe that's the answer. Take me there immediately. 
Mind you, Big Bruce Dad is all invested. Girl, you told me my son is alive. <laughs> I've been an outcast. I've been, you know, called everything a murderer. Like, my son is alive. My, my, some of my family is still here. That's all I ever needed to hear. He is finally starting to full on believe her and invest in this plan of him seeing Victor again. We have to have the, oh no, we cannot wait. I need to get to the car. We need to get in the car now. I need you to take me to the tree now. I, oh, okay, okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. That's what you said, let's go. We get in the car. She opens the glove compartment and sees that damn bracelet. <sighs> Tabitha loses it. This is this is this a game? Are you are you are you? Am, am I going to fail the test if I don't get? What happens if I get out the car? We don't need that right now, Tabitha. We were almost there, and we probably weren't gonna find nothing. But still, I just wanted to see. You know how long we've been waiting for an inkling, a breadcrumb, a sprinkle of a damn answer? We get this close, this close to the damn tree. <laughs> Tabitha is losing it because this can't, how is this making sense? I couldn't have ever been out of the from if something as significant as our song playing on the car radio being conveniently stuck in the tape deck, the bracelet that I made for my husband, you're saying that this is a part of you and your wife as well. This is a trick. <sighs> Victor's dad not wanting to hear any of this. Girl, what do you mean? You, you're going where? Rolling up here. Filling me with false hope, having my son's lunchbox, having me, you know, put my guard down, listen to you, believe you, shelter you for however many days to now tell me that you're leaving and that this isn't that. Get your ass in this car, girl. We are going. Shlabam. <laughs> Shlabam. Instant car wreck. We don't see any aftermath. We just see Tabitha awaken in an ambulance. With the cop some EMTs, we're on our way. On our way where? Back to the goddamn from, because what's in the road? That damn tree. Whoa! Oh man! I just, I just wanted them to try. <laughs> I just, I just, l l l let me, let me well, l l l let me live a little bit, okay? Let me at least have false hope that Tabitha was, I never did, but I just, <laughs> I wanted to see. The last thing we need from the damn from and in the from is more people. People like Victor's dad. People like a cop who has a badge and a gun, some authority, some EMTs, some people that it's already hard, you know, with your average everyday person just rolling up. You have a cop there. How long, especially if it's, it's hovering on Tabitha to convince them that this is the from? Cause we, we back in the from now, baby. It's about to be dark. They said it's two hours and it's about to get dark outside. <laughs> now we have an urgency to make it not only into town, but convince these people with authority to, why we have to get inside, why we can't be out after dark, why are you going to keep, you know, going in circles, why these things in the front are going to come out and rip your freaking flesh off, which is, that's always fun, trying to convince people of something, right? And then we have a oh, we have a cop there. I just feel I feel like that damn cop is going to be an issue because you know how people respect my authority and, and, and my um Eric uh, Cartman voice respect my authority. It's, it's just going to be an issue whether it's a cop or an EMT. People are just really really hard to convince that first go round. So the fact that we don't even have in tr a true ounce of daylight on our side, we just <laughs> we have two hours to get inside. But we are officially back in the from with Tabitha and. Victor's father. We were never out of the from in the first place. Well, you guys, that was my recap and review for the from season three, episode three. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts down below. As I love to state, this is not the Easter egg channel, but if you just want to shoot the shit about the episode, this is definitely the place for you. Do know, as I stated, tomorrow, Tuesday, uh, there is a live held every single Tuesday to discuss from more into depth, get into more ideas, not just with me, but with my homegirls. If you can't go to Bella Noches, then where can you go? Like, we, we really um, have fun getting into it. If you care to join us, the link will most definitely be below. But I look forward to reading your comments. Remember to share, like, subscribe. You know, show your girls some love. I, I, I love it. I need it. It's appreciated. I'll see you guys next time for episode four. 
now that we're back in the from. <sighs> that didn't last long, did it? Bye.